We are thankful to be in the presence of your glory within which you said you would present us faultless with exceeding joy. You're going to be glad to present us faultless. Hallelujah. In the presence of your mighty glory. And we understand today that the kingdom belongs to you. The power belongs to you. And the glory belongs to you, O oh Lord. The enemy does not get the glory out of our lives because the glory belongs to you. And so you've come to squeeze another element of your glory. Oh, my mama Shanda out of our lives by way of our worship. And our trials have not come to destroy us, but they've come to purify the gold through which the glory shall be revealed on a greater level. Thank you now, we praise you, we glorify you with the glory that you placed upon us. We give it back to you, Haya. And so now we declare the atmosphere confiscated, bound up and controlled by heaven that no flesh shall glory in your presence. Haya. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you wash over us. You cleanse us with the fire of your word. And then you strengthen us for the journey that is set before us. We receive it now and we declare that you shall manifest yourself in the manner that pleases you and execute heaven in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, whom we love and whom we serve. In Jesus' mighty name, we decree it as so, and we declare it with an amen, an amen, and it is so. Hallelujah. Times of refreshing where the Spirit of the Lord gives us his own direction. There are times when he recognizes that we need a refreshing from him so that we can move forward, wash ourselves from the dust of our travel, become strengthened with a new pair of eyes so that we understand it the way he sees it. We'll have the eyes of the Spirit and serve him in the manner that he has already foreordained. Is that all right? Somebody said amen and amen. Thank you, Chanel. Amen. Well, we're back for another round of glory, another degree of his manifestation. And one of the elements of God's prophetic move, and this is a prophetic workshop, so one of the elements of God's prophetic move is the prophetic is not rehearsed. It's not something that somebody necessarily teaches you. Uh, you need to learn how to operate in the prophetic, but, uh, and, and, and you need to learn how to know how to flow in the prophetic, but there are no ABCs in terms of step one, step two, step three. Because if you can learn it by step one, step two, and step three, then the enemy can learn it and defeat you with the strategy that God has revealed by step one, step two, step three. But the prophetic is, it's a whole industry of heaven. And I won't get into all of the details about it because we want to talk about why God has you here. But one of the things regarding the prophetic is that he will give you a knowing, an inner knowing of things that you have never known. Uh, we had never heard that song before. We just walked in the door and you all were singing it. And so we chimed right in. Because it's in line with what God is saying to us right now. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Now, why would the scripture have to say that? Jesus was telling the disciples in Matthew chapter 6. They said, Lord, teach us how to pray. We don't know how to pray. Now, if they're asking Jesus to teach them how to pray, then they understand that there are some techniques and elements of prayer that they were not aware of and that prayer must get effects and results. And so they were saying, Lord, we don't know how to get effects and results from prayer. We don't understand how to do this. And so 
you teach us how to pray. And so he began to say, he gave them the model and the pattern. He said, our father relationship, which art in heaven, his positioning, he's not down here. He sits in a realm that governs this realm. It's another dimension that is out of this world. It's out of time. So my father, it's relationship. Anything I need from you, you're my father, not just my God. My God is a different thing, but my father, that's relationship that says you care about me. You're my source. Uh, you provide for me. My father, which is not down here. You're in another place. You sit in another realm, which art in heaven, hallowed and holy be your name. Your name is not like any other. Your name is powerful. Thy kingdom, your kingdom come. Your kingdom, your government, your system come, and your will, what you desire to be done in, in, in earth, your kingdom come, your will be done in this earth as it mirrors what's going on in heaven. In other words, if it's not happening in heaven, it should not happen, be happening in the earth. There is no sickness in heaven. There is no disease in heaven. There is no divorce in heaven. Come on, there's no depression in heaven. There are no broken churches in heaven. Come on, saints. So thy kingdom come, your government and your system come, and thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Now give us this day. Give us what we need. Give us our sustenance. Give us the bread that we need, our daily bread. I don't need an old word. I need a word for right now. I need a word for my situation. Give us this day our daily bread. And then forgive us of the stuff that we did. Because if you don't forgive me, then my sins are forever before you, like David said. And if my sins are forever before you, then that creates a, a barrier between me and heaven. And what you want to release to me is now blocked by sin. That's why the ram's horn had to be cleaned up of the flesh that was on the inside of it. He says, now forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those that have trespassed against me. So if I don't forgive those that have trespassed against me, you won't forgive me. So therefore, I cannot hold anybody else hostage because if I do, then you'll hold me accountable. So forgive me as I forgive others. And then he says, and lead us not into the traps of the evil one. Don't lead me into temptation. Don't lead me where you know the enemy plans to, to destroy me. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Take us away from all this mess, the spirit of suicide and drug addiction. Deliver us from this evil while we live here, but we're trying to execute on a kingdom that's invisible. For thine is the kingdom. and the power to get it all done, and the glory that heals bodies. Make sure I'm protected, oh Lord, from the infections of the world forever, not just today, not just tomorrow, but forever and ever. And it's finished, it's settled, amen. Yours is the kingdom. Not worried about the Canadian government. Not concerned about the U.S. government. Yours, Jesus, is the real kingdom. And yours is the real power. That's why they don't know how to really deal with us. Because they've created another system out of which... There isn't the mind of Christ, and so they'll try to make slaves of us and slaves of citizens more than they'll try to now allow you to participate and be included in the wealth and the sharing of the resources. And so that's why we need a kingdom, my God, where our God, our Father, who is also king, he's king and he rules over all the resources. So when they try to take my resources, I can go to my Father in heaven and say, you control all of this anyway. And so I'm going to declare in the name of Jesus by the authority that you place on my life. And when I understand that yours is the kingdom and yours is the power, and I know that it has nothing to do with my might or my power, but by the spirit of the living God, you will release to me what I need because it's about expanding your kingdom. Hello, people of God. So, 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 so then that begs the question. And allows us to get into the next level of discussion here, which is, you know, if we're talking kingdom, whenever we begin to focus on kingdom, now it's a, it's a different conversation because kingdom uh, is not religious. Kingdom is not, you know, you're Baptist, I'm Presbyterian. No. 
human about resources, assets, military, soldiers, warfare. Come on, citizenry. Come on now. But the enemy made us religious. And when I become religious, that means I don't fight. When I become religious, that means I allow anything to happen because I just want to be so pious and just, you know, no. But when it's kingdom, I become a warrior now. So the enemy has lulled us to sleep with religiosity. Oh, just turn the other cheek and don't worry about it. No, when it's about a kingdom, there comes a time for warfare. Ecclesiastes 3 says, you know, that there's, that there's a season and a time for everything. Time for war, time for peace, a time to live, a time to die. Sometimes tell your neighbor, you're going to have to fight. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now a stronghold is a military term that says that there, there is a concentration of power right over there that you need to bust up with power. Okay, okay. So, so ask your neighbor, do you have any problems or strongholds that you need the might of God to dissipate? Do you have anything? Because if I'm thinking it's religious, I feel like all I have to do is pray. and get on my knees and just, oh Lord, our Father, if you would but just consider me and maybe help me if it's in your plan and in your will. And God, I just ask that you make everybody happy and bring great peace around the world. Great, great, great peace that we'll all get along and that everybody will be happy. And oh Lord, if it's just in your thoughts and your will and whatever you desire to happen, then just let it happen. No! No, 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 no. no. Prayer must be deliberate must be deliberate and you must have a target and you must now declare in this earth what needs to take place that will mirror heaven. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for all of the provisions that you've already given us. I bless you and I glorify you that I have a relationship with you and that in your name there is authority and in that authority you have given me the power to take down every demonic stronghold that is in my region. Now I speak and declare that the power of heaven shall be manifest in the earth and and even the political systems uh, shall submit to your will and your glory uh, and I shall be uh, discerning of every uh, weaponry of warfare uh, that you have given me I declare God uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, that your power uh, would be released uh, in Regina uh, Saskatchewan and in the nation of Canada uh, I declare and speak uh, and proclaim that the angelic forces uh, shall enter uh, into the political halls uh, oh God I speak uh, and come against uh, every spirit of suicide uh, that's trying to kill our young people my god and i put up a barrier and a vanguard in the name of jesus i declare my god that you are lord over all and lord of all and i speak these words with fire and i declare that the sword of the spirit shall cut out the flesh within the army of the lord so that we can be strong in the lord and in the power of your might somebody shout yeah that's how you pray. Prayer. James, the effectual, fervent prayer. The righteous accomplished as much. So, with that said, first Corinthians. And I could, you've heard the scripture. Well, you've heard it. You know, the Bible tells us, uh, Second Corinthians, in fact, uh, 10 and 4. Because scripture tells us, uh, Corinthians, both first and second Corinthians. When you read them and study them, it talks about weaponry and fighting. Ephesians 
Six talks about wrestling. Wrestling? But I thought we were just religious. <laughs> I thought we were just coming to church just to come. I thought you, you came to church on Sunday because you're trying to fulfill your Christian duties. Uh, but Ephesians is talking about wrestling and enemies. And 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 is saying, for, uh, look at, no, 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 look at the verse before it. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So, he's talking about warfare. Now, he's talking about the warfare. Uh, uh, he says, now, though we walk in the flesh and we live in the flesh, your fight is not in this level. It's not I punch you in the eye. Paul says, though I live in a physical realm, my fight is not in the physical realm. Watch this. But I'll get the victory in the physical realm if I know where the battlefield really is. Oh, Lord, help me. So then he says, in verse 4, he says, for the weapons. Now, what do I need weapons for if I'm religious? Why do I need weapons if all I am is just a little Christian? You know, all I do is I go to church. He's talking about weapons of warfare. And he says, for the weapons of I our warfare. It's inclusive for the weapons of my warfare, your warfare, your warfare, your, the weapons of all of our warfare are not carnal. They are not natural. They are not physical. But the Bible says, uh, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So I've got certain weapons that God has given me that are very specific that uh, while I'm in this warfare, I need to understand which weapons I need to use for what element of warfare. <laughs> When I come against the enemy and somebody's got a sickness, I really don't really need to, I don't have to do this. Because Jesus never prayed for the sick. He just declared the infirmity to loose its hold. Who was he going to be talking to? He just declared and told that infirmity, loose. Or he told him, oh Lord, take up your bed and walk. He made a declaration. He didn't ask God, oh Father, would you please raise him up? No, because he had already had the authority. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. And then he turned around to the disciples and said, now behold, I give you power to do the same thing. Not to pray about it, but to declare it, to speak it, to proclaim it with the sword that's in your mouth. The enemy has to obey because you got authority. I don't care if you've been saved for two days. As long as you are clean through the word, you can tell the devil where to go go and command the sickness to let go but some kind don't come out but by prayer and fast well are we ready for this or not he says there's some kind that have the level of authority in the spirit that they're not going to come out just by you saying come out They're not going to come out just by you saying, loose. Well, what does prayer and fasting have to do with this? What does prayer and fasting? Because remember that ram's horn? And that flesh that was in the horn was first formed and had that flesh up in it. It's right on the inside. On, on the inside and there. You can't see it. It looks good out here. Come here, Luke. It looks good out here. This looks really nice. It's, you know, all that looks really curvy and pretty, but on the inside. Stuff you can't see, that flesh up in there. You know what flesh is? Flesh is the kind of stuff uh, that uh, deals with your mind, the kinds of things. Fornication, uh, that's a fleshless sin that has a spiritual implication and will bind you up, soul and spirit. Up in the inside, while you're worshiping on the outside, you coming to church and being religious, but on the inside, there's some stuff that the enemy knows that if he can just keep you depressed, keep you jealous, that'll keep you bound up and not operating in power. So if in fact you can look good and God can try to release a sound through you, but that flesh is going to clog it up. That's why I got to fast and I got to pray to deal with me. I don't fast and pray necessarily just to deal with the devil. I'm coming after him once I deal with me. So once I deal with me and get this mess out of me, then that'll loose me to be able to operate in the degree of power that can tell the kind that don't come out 
unless I fast and pray and kill me. Oh Lord. And make a clear line of communication between heaven and earth. And when I fast and clean myself up to the degree that my outside matches my inside. Oh God. I'm liking this to the degree that my outside, the way that I look, the way that I dress, the way that I talk matches my heart. Oh Lord. No jealousy. No hatred. I don't care what they did to you. No hatred. No bitterness. No strife. I don't care how much they came against you and even against yourself. Some of you will not even forgive yourself for what you did in the past. You're holding it against yourself. So you now are holding yourself hostage. You need to forgive yourself of your own trespasses. I don't care if you cheated on your husband. Doesn't matter if you cheated on your wife. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And James said, if we say we do not sin, we lie. That's why every day I need to be forgiven. Every day I need to repent because repentance is a spiritual bath that washes me on the inside. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. So here now, the Bible says, the weapon. So you mean you got weapons? You got sword and spear. Another weapon you did not know you had. Really confuses the enemy. Because he does not know when you use this particular weapon, he's not sure what to do. He's, the enemy tries to decode, tries to figure things out, tries to, he wants to study, he studies. He studies God, remember, he was one of the archangels, so he knows the characteristics of God. He probably submits to you, he knows his Bible. He knows that's one of your weapons. That's why I came to Eve and came against the work that God had given her, which is the gifts of woman. The enemy is like, how are you going to surely die if you eat of this tree? No, God will know you'll be just like him, knowing everything. What has he got to hide from you? He snatched away her sword. Put her in a position where she could no longer fight. That's why Jesus said when Satan came in the wilderness, Jesus kept saying, It is written. It is written. Every time he said it is written, that was pulling out a sword. Because the word is a sword of the spirit. He didn't holler. He didn't scream. But he slight. It shoo, it shoo, written. Shoo. Uh, that was a battle in uh, the wilderness that Jesus was victorious over. That Eve and Adam, the first Adam, were not. So he took the word of God, the sword. Fault with word. Okay, so 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 now we got multiple weapons for our warfare, but there's one that the enemy can't quite get a handle. I promise you, he can't quite get a handle on this one because this sword is real unique. It's um he can't read it. He can't. He doesn't know what that means when. What does that mean when, wait a minute, I, I really can't um, reverse engineer something that I don't understand. I've got to understand how that guitar was made in order to reverse engineer it and maybe make one better or make one just like, I got to at least know what it consists of. But there's one weapon that he cannot reverse engineer. He, he, he can't figure it out because it's so unique and it's so different. And, and, and what that is is, watch this y'all, it's the ram's horn. It's, he cannot understand 
uh, what the different sounds mean. He, he doesn't understand that uh, there are multiple sounds, Luke, that the ram's horn actually makes four different sounds to give 13 different messages. Oh, God, help me. Now, now, four times 13. What is that, y'all? Four times 13. Is that 52? Well, what is four times 13? 52 different variations, at least, of a ram's horn sound that's released in the atmosphere that the enemy has to try to figure out. 52 different things that thing can mean in the realm of the spirit. So when you blow, that's why you can blow a long blast, Luke, or you can blow staccato, then follow by do. And so not only do I have a ram's horn that Luke is holding, hold that up, Luke. He's holding that one. But you got one right on the inside of your belly. So if I call the Lord and say, hey, or I say, oh, 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 Whatever. You see, the old mothers used to travail like that. Y'all remember? <laughs> Travailing. Why? Because there's a message between their belly and heaven that's telling them what to do. There are some sounds that put the enemy on the run. Now, do y'all want to know about this or not? Do you want to know what the weapons are? Do you want to know what heaven's secrets are? Luke, do you want to know how to blow that thing and to integrate with heaven? Hiya! To the degree that God is giving messages to the earth through the windpipe of heaven. So, do, do y'all want to know? You want to know? So, there are, y'all want to write some stuff down or y'all just came and sit? You, you want to write this down or we can tape it and give it to you later, but 13 different purposes of the blowing of the shofar, the blowing, the ram's horn, the calls assemblies. Uh, that's in Numbers chapter number 10. Isaiah 27, so when God wants to call you together to give you instructions, uh, he uses a ram's horn. Uh, it was used to journey uh, from one place to the next. So when they were ready to move from one place to the next, Numbers 10 and Numbers 19, uh, even Hebrews, they called the people to move, all right? It's no longer time to stay here. We've got to move from here to the next place of advancement. And the ram's horn and the shofar were used to make that sound. Watch this. The next reason was the calling, watch this, y'all, of princes. When God wanted to call somebody, he called a prince, the leaders together. He wanted to assemble them to get instruction. Again, Numbers 10, he called them, and then there was a different blast. There were two blasts that were used to call call all the assembly together. One blast for the leaders, two blasts to call all of the assemblies. Now watch this. How is it that God was using sounds in order to give the people instruction? Because they were all over the place. They didn't have a dinner bell, ding, 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 dinner. No, they didn't have that. Because remember, there was almost a million of them. But the sound of the shofar and the sound of the ram's horn could pervade all the different camps. And they would hear the sound and they would gather. Oh Lord, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And so the next thing the blowing of the alarms, Joel 2 and 1. Sound the alarm, Amos 3, verses 6 and 7. He sounds the alarm to warn the church of satanic attack. And I tell you right now, there's an attack underway within the earth. The spirit of suicide, the spirit of death, the spirit that says there's nothing to be afraid of of death. And now our young people are starting to think that death is pretty intriguing. They want to play around with death. They want to play around with it not thinking that it has the level of finality that it does. Oh, there's a sound that needs to be released in the atmosphere to let us know what the plan and the attack of the enemy are. Oh God, for war, for oppression, for the days of gladness, for solemn assemblies, for the beginning of months, for the sacrifice of offerings. Did you not know that the, the ram's horn was blown when the offerings were brought? They blew the shofar over the offerings and it caused a multiplication within the camp of Israel. The shofar was blown to a anoint kings. When a king was anointed, the shofar was blown. Oh God, we'll come back to that one. That's 2 Kings 9 and 2 Samuel 15. And even David, he was anointed out of a ram's horn. Come on somebody, there was a ram's horn, a shofar that held the oil. And David was anointed out of that ram's horn. Come on church, I can go real deep with this. The next thing was the dedication of Solomon's temple. The horn was blown, the shofar was blown. Oh God, the shofar was also blown for the year of great jubilee and then the shofar is finally blown to represent final judgment in the book of revelation so the question becomes now those are 13 different variations 13 different purposes 
what are the four different sounds, Luke? What are, the, what, are the, what are the four sounds that we need to know and even in this church we need to understand? In worship, there's not just one sound. Because if the shofar can be blown, the Bible says it can be blown to stop the enemy. Y'all know how a policeman walks up and they'll, they'll show. Back in the day, they'll show a policeman with his hat. He's got his whistle. He'll blow it. <laughs> stop! Everybody's like, stop. You got to stop. I was driving down the highway in the city of Atlanta the other day, and there was a man who wasn't even a policeman. He was a big highway, Highway 85, big highway. Man wasn't even a policeman. He worked for State Farm Insurance Company. And there was an accident on the road. And what he was doing was he was stopping traffic so that the cars that were in the accident could move from the left side of the street all the way over to the right. But it was a four-lane highway with cars during uh, rush hour traffic. So how are you going to get all these cars to stop? I mean, in the middle of the highway. He walked out slowly, put up his hand as if he had authority. Put up his hand as if he had authority. He had on this little yellow vest. He had a little whistle in his mouth. He began to blow, lifted up his hands, and everybody just stopped. Five-lane highway. Cars coming as far as you could see in the middle of rush hour traffic. And you ain't seen rush hour traffic until you've seen Atlanta rush hour traffic. He stands up and he's, he just does like this. Stop. And everybody stopped. Nobody ran over him. Nobody disagreed with him. Nobody blew their horn and started cussing him out. None of that. They just stopped. Hmm. There's a degree of power that you have because of the badge that you wear in the kingdom. That if you tell a devil, stop, loose your hold, which means let go of who you're holding on to. No screaming, no holler, no spitting. Stop. The sound of the ram's horn has that power. Blown through a clean vessel. So, 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 look, the issue is not, it's not about, uh, it's not about this thing in and of itself. It's not, it's not this. It's what's coming out of here that's blowing through this. So, so, so this, this is the only instrument that is a weapon and not an instrument. It's an instrument meaning it's used. It's a weapon that's used by God where I can get into the curvature and all the fabric and things of that nature, but it creates sounds that are so unique that the enemy cannot interpret. Okay. So, so, so Luke, come here. Come here. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you this. So, so for the coming era, and even for tonight, we're going to get prepared for this. There are some, some four sounds, right? The first sound is tekia. It's a long Right, that that uh, that that uh, is is for joy, for triumph, for happiness. It's this long blast, joy, triumph, and happiness. Then there's a second sound. It's broken. It means brokenness, and it's these these three shorter blasts, just shorter three, dut, dut, dut. and then you stop, dut, dut, dut. and then you stop, because that represents our brokenness before God. Well, we can't make it without him. We can't do anything without him. And my, my righteousness is as filthy rags. God, I need you more than I've ever needed you before. God, I can't do this. This next realm, this next dimension. Lord, I, I, I feel that I'm not even competent. I'm not even worthy. I'm not even able. I am broken before you. If you've sinned before God, I'm broken before you. I'm broken. My heart is contrite. Oh, Lord, and I'm of the heavy spirit. And that's why the Bible says that the shofar is a cutter. It cuts and it burns. It cuts away the flesh, the blowing of it, the, it cuts away the flesh, and it burns and tattoos the heart. Do you understand? And so it's not just blowing a shofar. It's not just blowing a ram's horn, but there's a function. There's an action. That's why last night when you went home, you, you were so full of what the impact and the, and the effects of the spirit had on your spirit. Did anybody last night, were you able to sleep last night? Did anybody toss and turn in your sleep a little bit? Did you toss and turn in your sleep? Anybody toss and turn in your sleep a little bit? I'm not talking about from demonic dreams. I'm talking about from the power 
God last night. And so, yeah, I've had visions and I had, I had some, you know, just glimpses, not a dream. I had visions and glimpses of heaven. That's the kind of residue. And then the next one is teruah, which means an alarm. And this is a set of nine or ten short blasts. You understand? You got to count them because it can't be the same as Shavarim. It can't be the same because Shavarim means brokenness. It means we're broken before God. And then the last one, the fourth one, Luke, is Takia Gadola, which means a prolonged, unbroken sound. It's prolonged and unbroken. You blow it as long as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance in your belly, as long as the Spirit gives you the wind. And that one represents a final call to repentance. That's just like being in the clubs. And you know how they say, final call, last call for a dance, last call for a drink. That's the final call. And that's the kind of sound that God is releasing in the earth in this hour because Jesus is soon to come. And there's a final call to get in on this thing. There's also a final call to come into this level of anointing and glory that's going to now shake the earth. So are you ready, Luke? Do you understand the differences? Do you understand it's not one sound, it's multiple sounds. And so there's the sound of the alarm, there's the sound of the blast in terms of triumph and joy, there's the sound, oh God, of brokenness, and there's the sound of repentance. So now with that said, you've got now 13 different purposes, four different sounds, 52 different variations. And you mean to tell me we have one approach? Oh no, no, no. Are, are, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? You ready? I'll call on you when I need you. Now, 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 now what did I just say, y'all? Were y'all listening? Or, or, or did you go to sleep on me? Were you listening or, 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 or did you, did you, you think that, uh, that, that we're done with this? Are you listening or do you understand that the power of the ram's horn, and not only the one that Luke is holding, but the power of the one that's inside your belly, there's some cries that'll come out of you that are cries related to uh, the repentance of the Lord that strikes your heart. Luke ain't going to follow you home. He's not going to follow you to school. He's not going to be with you all day long. So you've got to learn how to operate and function in this thing when you're by yourself, when you're not in church. You've got to learn how to lift up your voice when you want to release the sound of an alarm and when the shofar is blown. When you talk about alarm and getting ready, when the shofar so far as blown, the angels begin to now galvanize and they begin to now get at attention so they can achieve what it is that God has now released through the message of the shofar. Do you understand? So the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds so that when every stronghold that's in your life when I now begin to worship and when I now begin to release a sound in the atmosphere, then the strongholds that are in my life begin to come tumbling down on the inside of me. Do you understand? Because the Bible says we are God's workmanship. And that word means architecture. I am his building. I am his structure. And there are some things that the devil has included in your structure that God needs to dismantle. And so when we go into prayer and we go into worship and we go into spiritual warfare with our mouths, we need to understand what we're doing. We need to now worship with an understanding. We need to now shout with an understanding, with a target in mind. So then if I shout, am I shouting for joy? Or am I shouting to dismantle and topple a demonic system? If I shout, am I shouting to warn? Or am I shouting because I'm broken? There are different reasons. And God will put a shout right down on the inside of you and you'll release that sound that then will answer your problem or someone else's. And I want to show you. I'm teaching you this because we're going to put it into practice this afternoon and tonight. And for those that are not here today that are going to be here tonight, you are going to be agents because I'm going to use your belly and God's going to use your belly because you will know what the different sounds mean. And I'll remind you, don't worry, what's the first one? What's the second one? I don't remember. I'll remind you. 
and out of your belly shall flow not only rivers of living water, but a weapon that's going to cut the disease that's on their body. Is anybody ready for this? Is anybody, are you ready for this? And even you children, you, you, you are included too. The things that are challenging you at school and these demonic spirits and the warfare and peer pressure and suicide, drug addiction, oh no, you're involved too. So every last one of the trumpets that are inside of you are about to be engaged for this particular warfare. Do you understand? I'm giving you a moment to absorb this because we're about to go. Do you understand? Now the last thing about the, the, the ram's horn is mm, there are only two instruments that the Bible speaks the most concerning. One is a harp. The other is the ram's horn. The harp is to put you to sleep. You know. Reminds you of dreaming. Relaxes you. Makes you feel nice and at home and comfortable. Because you like sleep. The ram's horn is to wake you up. It's to shake you and cause a trembling on the inside. It's to cause you to get ready. It's the ram's horn is to cause you to do just like this. Huh. Put you in position. Whereas the harp puts you to sleep. The ram's horn says, wake up! Thou that sleepest. The enemy's coming! It has a purpose to affect on the inside. So then, if I holler at you, or if I holler, period, there's a sound that can cause such a trembling in the atmosphere and in you. There's a holler that can cause a trembling in me and cause the flesh to be shaken. And there's one that can cause a trembling in somebody else. So I can holler to the degree, I can release a sound to the degree that everything in you that's not like God will shatter and will break off your life. I can holler and lift up my voice like a trumpet and make sure that the enemy loses his hold on you. Do you feel the power? Do you feel the pressure of that ram's horn? Do you feel the pressure of that glory? It's that degree of glory that we use, oh Lord, that comes out of my mouth. And that's why my grandmother and my great-grandmother, when it was time for war and the enemy stepped up into their houses, they brought drug addiction, they brought division and fighting, financial problems. You'd hear my grandmother. She just begin to shout, and the enemy would begin to tremble. Oh, 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 oh. You got power in your belly that you did not know you had. That's why the enemy will try to keep you in the service and keep your mouth shut. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Yeah, that's due when it comes to the silent assemblies. Oh, but there's a time when I need to shout because I got to get something done in the spirit when I need to break some strongholds I need to shout I got a ram's horn in my belly. 52 different variations that the enemy cannot understand. I can go high, then I can go shout, 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 shout. Are you with me in this place? Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. So now, I got this. So now, what my grandmother used to say is my mom. And Luke, they didn't understand fully what they were doing in scripture. Because a lot of them couldn't read. You know, slaves back 1800s, 1700s, y'all know African Americans were brought to the United States as slaves. So they wouldn't let us read. 
Oh, Jesus. They wouldn't let us read, so we couldn't read the Bible. We couldn't read the Bible to tell what it said. So you didn't know what the scripture was saying. Oh, my God. But guess what? I'm so thankful that the Bible says, Thy word is spirit and it is life. So if I can't read it, I can feel it. If I can't read it, I can discern it. If I can't read it, Oh Lord, I can see it in my spirit. The Holy Ghost will read the word right in my spirit. And the Lord said, I will write my word on the tablets of your heart, even if I can't read. Oh Lord, the Holy Ghost took the finger of heaven and wrote it on my heart. And what was on my heart came out of my belly. And therefore, even though I didn't know that Joel 2 and 1 says, lift up your voice like a trumpet the word that was written in my belly by the Holy Ghost Allah told my grandmother shout and she began to release a shout told her now begin to travail sounds like shivering I thank you for his amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see somebody say yeah somebody show me yeah somebody say yeah somebody show me yeah hallelujah so now stay right there young man so it ain't got nothing to do with how you were born, what circumstance you were born into. But see, now we can read. We got degrees. We own businesses. You're free. You can live where you want. Some of us got mansions. And we're weak as water. Can't discern. Don't know the enemy when he's coming. Wouldn't know the touch of God if he engulfed you. He touched you, tried to hit him back. Oh, we got all these amenities, all of these luxuries, but yet we're so far away from God. How ah, long for the day that my intellect now is now subdued under the mighty hand of God because your intellect is what now fights the will of God. You know more than God. You know how to do it better than he does. If he says shout, he means shout. We're intellectual. You're too intellectual. No, I, I can't shout. I can't be hollering. That's just too much. That's a, it's not what church folk do. I can't, I can't be making no staccato noise. It, th 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 that sounds silly. That sounds like what kids do. That's, no, I can't. I can't be making no long blasts. It was stupid. But the Lord said to do it. And when he told the children of Israel with Joshua, he told them, he said, now tell them to march around this wall seven times and don't say a word. They could have said, what are we marching for? Why are we marching? Because we don't understand. No, they just marched. And on the seventh time, does anybody have a wall you need the Holy Ghost to take down? It's about the sound that comes out of your belly. I'm going to close this Bible. And uh, we're about to get ready to do something. So, so now, with what God is doing in the earth, what, what we've stepped up into, he's getting us ready for some greatness. Um, but, but, but do me one favor. Uh, first, first Corinthians 14. Just turn that real quick. Got to get us to it right quick. Make sure I'm mindful of my time. All right. All right. First Corinthians 14. Just real quick. Tell me something. I need your Bible, Janice. You got this. I got this. Nine o'clock. Let's go with six. Talking about the prophetic. 
Entschuldigung. It talks about speaking in tongues. And Watch this. Let's just read it real quick. Follow after charity. And you should desire spiritual gifts. But you should rather desire that you might prophesy. Paul says you should desire any spiritual gift, whether it be discerning of spirits, or gifts of healing, or, right? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. He said you should desire that. It's okay to do that. But rather, out of all these gifts, you really should rather to prophesy. He goes on to say, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto men. Uh, you know, or not unto men, rather. If you're speaking in an unknown tongue, you're speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. You're not speaking to men. I'm not talking to you when I'm speaking in tongues. This is a Bible. This is, you're not speaking unto men, but you're talking to God when you speak in an unknown tongue. When you speak in tongues, you're talking to God and not to men. He says, now, he says, he says, for no man understands you. You don't understand what I'm saying when I'm saying that. You don't understand it. Paul says, no man understands you. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. So when you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking mysteries in the spirit realm. Because don't nobody understand you. They don't, they don't get you. They don't understand. He said, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. So when you're prophesying, you're speaking, to, I'm speaking directly to you. And I declare over your life, and I speak and I see in your life, that God is going to bring you to great levels. And I I see a financial breakthrough and I see that your children shall grow up to be great men of valor and I see that an attack is coming by the words that are coming out of my mouth I declare that you are protected I declare that there is a vanguard over your life I declare that and I speak it in English and so you understand it but if I stood here and said you didn't understand that so Paul is saying he says he says he that speaketh unto men you speak edification and exhortation and comfort that's what prophesying does when I speak in English. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. So when I speak in tongues, I'm building up myself. Then he goes on to say, he says, he says, but he that prophesieth edifies the church. So if I prophesy in English, I'm edifying and building up and giving encouragement to the whole church. This is what Paul is saying. Then he says, I would that you would speak with tongues, but rather, he said, I, I want you to speak in tongues. But I'd rather that you prophesy. I'd rather that you prophesy because your tongues build you, but your prophecy builds the church. So there's a bigger effect and a bigger impact when you prophesy in English. Now that's the Bible. Then he says, watch this. He says, he says, uh, for greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks in tongues. Except he interpret if he speaks in tongues and tells the church what you're talking about so that they can receive and understand. Now, brethren, here we go. If I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. So if I speak to you in tongues, how are you going to understand and how are you going to benefit? Except I interpret. Then he goes on to say, and even in verse 7, and even things without life giving sound. Things that have no life that give sound, he says, watch this. Even things without life giving sound, whether it's a pipe or a harp, except they give a distinction in their sound, how shall it be known what is piped or what is harped? If the pipe or the harp doesn't give a distinction, how are you going to know what the message is? So you mean to tell me a pipe and a harp can have distinction that gives a message? Okay, verse number eight is where we land. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, how shall it be known? Or who shall prepare himself to the battle? So if you're blowing, and if you're shouting, and if you're blowing the ram's horn, and it does not have a specific, distinct sound, how, Luke, are they going to know how to war and how to move forward? So if you blow the trumpet, even those that play the instruments, if you play, but specifically regarding the trumpet, because the shofar has a specific sound for a specific purpose that tells the bellies of the people. And as a matter of fact, you would not even have to figure out naturally what to do. Your spirit would just fall in line and align with what God is doing. You understand what I'm saying? So if he blows a sound that, that speaks of joy and triumph, you don't even have to understand just audibly what that means, but your spirit will interpret because God has put a decoder on the inside of you to understand exactly what is being spoken in the spirit realm. Do you understand? 
So Luke, the purpose is when you blow, it's to blow with purpose and intent. It's to blow so that you now hear what God is saying and you blow it through the shofar. You hear what God is saying and then the rest of the musicians fall in line. It's all integration. It's all about synthesizing. It's all about a symphony of heaven that God brings from heaven down on the earth. What I hear in heaven, in my spirit, now I begin to blow and release in this atmosphere. And there are sounds that will now release joy, that will release oil, new anointings. There are sounds that will release financial miracles. There are sounds that just by the blowing of the shofar will now rebuke cancers. They will dry up. There are sounds by the shofar that will cause those that are in wheelchairs to get up, Luke. So you've got to hear the sound in the spirit. There are sounds from the shofar that will cause the heart to beat with the rhythm of life. High blood pressure to be dissipated. Come on, kidney disease to disappear. Come on, dialysis to be rebuked. Oh God, kidney disease and liver failure. Come on, there's a sound in the atmosphere that will cause every problem that you face to now be dismantled. There is a sound in the atmosphere that will break every bank in the region. Come on, church. There is a sound that will cause me to rejoice because my deliverance and my release is now. There is a sound that is released that is distinctive and very clear so that the people of God can hop on that sound worship in that sound oh Lord there is a sound hallelujah that brings full deliverance in the name of Jesus are you ready to release the sound shout yes are you ready to release the sound shout yes are you ready to release the sound shout yes are you ready to release the sound shout yes so watch this y'all if don't nobody get this, but this front row, if nobody gets this, but this row, you need to take authority over your row and declare my row gets the revelation because what God is doing is he's breaking up some stuff. He's going to do multiple things at one time. He's going to break down strongholds. He's going to pierce the darkness. He's going to loose your children. Come on, come on, come on. He's going to multiply you financially. He's going to cause your raise and your promotion to come forward. Oh Lord, he's going to tell the world that Jesus is Lord. My God, he's going to now subdue kings and subdue kingdoms. Oh Lord, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall stand forever. There is a sound. There is a sound. There is a sound. There is a sound. And it's released in this place. And whatever sickness you have shall be delivered. Whatever infirmity that you have, it shall be healed. Somebody shout it! Yeah. Shout it! Yeah. Shout it! Yeah. All right, now listen, y'all stay right there. Y'all, do y'all understand the degree of intensity? Do you get it? Do you do you get it? Do you get it? No, no, no. I'm not sure if y'all get it. I'm not sure if you get it. Do, do you get it? Do you get it? Do you do you sense him? Do you feel him? I do not worship without a purpose. I don't praise without a purpose. I got a purpose in here. There's some stuff I got to kill up in here. There's some things I got to dismantle up in here. There's some deliverance that's coming up in here. There's healing coming up in here. There are miracles that are being released up in here. Hey, 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 hey. Luke is not gonna blow until we're ready. Hey, I need to hear you, yeah. Now, hold on. I know we're excited. Give me 30 seconds. Y'all keep it right there. I need every mouth open. I need you to take authority over your row and make sure that everything on your row is blessing God and releasing a sound. I don't care if you've never done it before to get what you've never had before. You got to do what you've never done before. Hold on. I'm ready. 
ready on the count of three Luke are you ready Luke are you ready watch this we're gonna begin to open up our mouths and release a sound I don't care what it is I don't care what you feel I don't care what you don't feel open up your mouth and begin to release a sound open up your mouth and begin to release a sound and Luke you're gonna blow when you hear the spirit tell you what to blow come on musicians get ready get ready open up your mouth one two three shout 